What is going on guys? In this video, I wanna to talk to you all about DynamoDB filter expressions and how they can be used to narrow down the results of your DynamoDB queries or scan operations when you're trying to interact with your table. So in terms of the agenda for this video, the first thing I'm gonna do is just talk to you about what DynamoDB filter expressions are. From there, we're gonna talk about how filter expressions work through a couple of hands-on examples. And then finally, I'm gonna tell you about some best practices that you should know about if you are already using filter expressions or considering using filter expressions as part of your DynamoDB access patterns. So let's just get right to it and first of all, talk about what filter expressions are. Now, as you may imagine, a filter expression allows you to narrow down or filter your data based on some set of criteria. Now, filter expressions support operations that you would expect, such as equal to, not equal to, greater than, less than, contains, empty, begins with, and a whole bunch of other ones. I'm gonna leave a link to the documentation below so you can check all of these out, but it's very similar to what you can do with SQL. So speaking of SQL, let's just take a look at a very quick example. So we're doing select star from students where first name is equal to Daniel. And this part here, the last portion where we're doing the where clause, that's gonna be very similar to what we're doing with the filter expressions using DynamoDB. Now, another thing that you should know before we get into an example is that filter expressions are only useful for scan and query operations. And just in case you forgot what a scan and query operation are or how they're different, let's just take a quick look at this table that we have here. So we have origin country, creation date, and attribute. So when you're using a scan operation, a scan operation will look at the contents of every row in your table. So if you're scanning your table, DynamoDB will inspect every single row that exists as part of your table. Now, if you're performing a query operation, you need to supply a partition key. So say for instance, in this example, if we specify our partition key to be USA as part of the query, then we're only gonna get back these two columns, the first one and the third one, because the origin country is equal to USA. So in the query example, keep in mind that DynamoDB is only ever inspecting the rows that have the partition key equal to whatever you specified. So in this example, where we're trying to find rows with USA as the country, DynamoDB is only going to ever consume read capacity units for two rows, this one here and this one here. Now for the scan operation, it's gonna consume read capacity on every single row. Now you can accomplish the same thing that you did with a query to grab the USA rows through a scan operation using a filter expression. So you can set your filter expression to say, give me only the rows that have USA in the origin country. But keep in mind, if you do that, what we just said before was that every single row, one, two, three, four, needs to be inspected. So you're gonna be consuming four units of read capacity when you're performing a scan operation on a table of this size. So keep in mind, if you have a very big table, it's not practical to do this. You'll be spending a lot, a lot of money just to do a basic scan operation to narrow down your data. So using the query here is definitely more favorable. And the last point that I was kind of alluding to before is that it filters data after it is retrieved. So like I said, when we're doing a scan and we're trying to filter based on USA, we're gonna iterate over these four rows. However, only two are ever gonna be returned, but we are gonna consume four units of read capacity for this table example. So that's a little bit about what a filter expression is. Let's move on now to talk about an example. And we're gonna do so looking at this through the lens of this table, which is very similar to what we just had. Instead, now we have account ID being our partition key. And you can tell here, these are globally unique. And then we have a sort key for dates and it's just ascending order here. And then we have very different countries uh, of this account ID. So USA, Canada, USA, and Germany for these four different users in this example. So let's take a look at some examples using Python. So in our first one, what do we have here? So we're importing Bodo3, we're getting a reference to our DynamoDB client, we're getting a reference to our table name here, and we're performing a table scan operation. Now we're supplying a filter expression and what are we saying here? Well, we're saying that we want origin country, that's the attribute or the column that we're looking for. And we're using the EQ operation, which means equal to, and it must be equal to USA. So what would this return in this example? Well, it's only gonna return the rows with account ID one and account ID three. And that's because origin country is equal to USA for both of them. Keep in mind, because you're doing the scan operation, you're gonna be iterating over each one. So that's pretty straightforward, just demonstrates the very basic operations when you're just looking for something or trying to narrow down your criteria. This would be equivalent to a SQL statement that says select star from table name where origin country is equal to USA. Pretty standard stuff. 
So let's take a look at a second example here using a different operation. So similarly, we're using the filter expression. This time we're looking at creation date and we are using the begins with operation and we only want the ones that begin with 2019. So if we look at our table here and the, the data that's in it, we can see that all of the creation dates start with 2019. So all of the rows here are gonna be returned. So we're gonna get four back as part of this table scan. However, you can imagine if you're only looking for rows that are from 2020 or 2021 or a particular year, how this can be very useful. Now in the third example, we're looking at a combination of filter expressions. So in the first part, similar to what we did above, we're saying the creation date must be greater than or equal to 2019, October 1st. So if we look at this, just by considering the first clause here, if we look at this data, this row, it does not qualify if we're performing this scan because its date is prior to 2019, October 1st. This is September 30th. However, this row does, this row does, and this row does. So in this example, you would scan the entire contents of this table. This item would be filtered out by DynamoDB and you would only get back these three rows, rows two, three, and four that have their dates greater than October 1st. So it doesn't end there though, because we have a secondary filter expression and we're using it with an and operation, uh, what are we saying here? So we're saying origin country must be equal to USA. So in the first clause, we saw that we would get back these three rows. However, now we're providing an additional filter and now we only want the one that has the date greater than October 1st and the country that is equal to USA. So in that case, we would only get account ID 3 or row 3 back in this query. So this just provides you with some examples of how to use filter expressions and how they apply to a very basic table. Let's move on now to talk about some of the best practices in terms of using filter expressions as part of your access pattern for DynamoDB. So the first one, and I found this, this quote from an article I was reading by Alex Debris, which is a great article on filter expressions. And he has this excellent quote, which is that filter expressions do not replace bad table design. And I can't agree with this more. Filter expressions should be used fairly sparingly. And if you're using them too much, it means you should be probably leveraging additional features of DynamoDB, which is my next point. I'll get into that in a minute or you just have a very bad table design, which is forcing you to rely on filter expressions. So just keep that in mind when you're using filter expressions, you shouldn't be using them all over the place. They should be done very sparingly just to reduce the payload size of your data or restricting your data in very simple ways. It's not a good practice to use this as part of scan operations because you're gonna be scanning your entire table, which is gonna consume a massive amount of read capacity units and cost you a whole lot of money. So if you do find yourself in a situation where you're using a lot of filter expressions, then you probably want to invest in using indexes or GSIs, which stand for global secondary indexes, to retrieve your data by specific value. And if you don't know what GSIs are, I have a very, very in-depth video on this uh, for you to check out. I'll put that at the end of the, the video for you to watch. But essentially what GSIs allow you to do, if we just bring a table example here, if we are consistently only looking for records that have a particular origin country, and we saw that in order to get the ones with USA using a scan or a query, you have to kind of iterate through all records in the table, which we kind of acknowledged as a bad thing. If you set an index on origin country, what that means is that you can directly acquire the rows that have the value that you're looking for immediately in linear time. So instead of iterating over all records, you would only iterate over the records that actually have the data value that you are specifying. So keep in mind though, with GSIs, there are a maximum number. I believe it's 10 as of now, but it could be higher and you will incur extra cost uh, as a result of using GSIs. So I hope you found this video useful. Check out the one on the right here on GSIs. And as always, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much guys, and I'll see you next time.